Hey guys, I'm going to work the class problem that is probably the most difficult one um, as far as the you know one that's on your homework tonight. And it's something like this. It's kind of a doozy with all of these fractions. So you know me. Um, I really don't like these fractions. So what I personally am going to do is I'm going to do something to get rid of all of those denominators. And I'm going to do that by finding the least common denominator of 2 and 4, those two denominators, which of course is 4. So we should remember that from around 6th grade. And I am going to actually go in and multiply everything in the equation by 4, which is of course the same thing as 4 over 1. And you're going to see what that's going to do for me in a second. Remember, you got to multiply everything by 4 over 1 because those fraction properties of, e or I'm sorry, the equation properties of equality say that if you do something to one side of an equal sign, you got to do it to everything. So what you can see I've done right now is I've gone through and I've added a 4, which is the same thing as a 4 over 1, um, to everything. And I'm going to multiply all of these pieces of the equation by 4. Now, what is that going to do for me? So you're going to see, and I'm going to rewrite the equation down here. So first of all, I'm going to do 4 times x, because remember that you multiply straight across. So that is going to be 4x. And then if I multiply 1 times 2, that gives me 2. So this becomes 4x over 2. Well, 4x over 2 simplifies to a 2x because 4 and 2 cancel. So what I've done is I've effectively gotten rid or eliminated that denominator that I did have up there in that fraction. Now if I look at my next one, I've really got 1 times 4, which is just going to be a 4. And then if I look at my next fraction, so I did multiplied straight across. Oh, let me put my equal sign here because I want to keep that nice and lined up. So 4 times 1 is 4, and then 1 times 4 is 4. So that 4 over 4 is going to simplify to a 1x, which is simply an x. And then last but not least, I'm going to multiply the 4 times the 6, which is going to give me a minus 24. So as you can see, by taking the least common denominator of the two denominators that I had in the original problem, remember least common denominator is the smallest number that 2 and 4 will both go into. Then I took that least common denominator and I multiplied it by everything, by every single term in the equation. And then once I got done canceling stuff out, now I have an equation that is just a more basic one without having all of those fractions in the way. Now, I have to get rid of one of the x's. Now I've just got a plain old equation that we're kind of more used to solving from 8th grade. I like to draw a line down the middle to remind myself about one side of the equation versus the other. In order to be able to solve an equation, you got to get an x by itself. So that means one of those x's needs to go. I think it's going to be easier to get rid of the x. And of course, if I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. So I'm going to do 2x minus x is going to leave me with just an x. Bring down the plus 4. x minus x is now gone. So I'm just going to bring that down this guy and make sure you pay attention to the fact that it's a negative 24, not a positive 24. Then i got to cancel out that plus 4 with a minus 4. x is equal to negative 28. Then everybody's favorite part of solving the equation, I got to go back and I got to check it. So I'm going to first take the original equation, which was x over 2 plus 1 equals 1 fourth x minus 6. I'm pretty sure that x is equal to negative 28. So I'm going to take the x's in the original problem and I'm going to substitute negative 28 in for those values. So I'm actually going to recopy the rest of the problem real quick. Because if you're real visual like me, it can help. So there's the rest of the problem. I'm going to go in and substitute 
negative 28, and for this x, so instead of, oops, I don't know why I made that an x, I'm sorry guys. So that instead of an x divided by 2, I'm going to put in a negative 28 divided by 2. And instead of 1 fourth times x, I'm going to put in 1 fourth times negative 28. So negative 28 divided by a positive 2 is going to give me negative 14 plus 1. 1 fourth times a negative 28 really just means that I'm doing negative 28 divided by 4. So that's a negative 7. Negative 14 plus 1 is a negative 13. Negative 7 minus 6 is a negative 13. So because I substituted negative 28 in for x in the original problem, and I got it to balance out, I have a pretty good idea that I probably did it right. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to try the second one. Um, go ahead and pause the video. Try it on your own or look at your notes. I am going to go ahead and work it, though, so that you can see. So I started off by finding the least common denominator for 3 and 6, which is 6. Then I'm going to go through, and so I'm going to multiply everything here by 6. Because remember, my properties of equality say that if I am going to multiply one thing by 6 to cancel out the denominator, i got to do everything by 6. So I'm going to start off here. This 6 times 2 is going to give me a 12. 1 times 3 gives me 3. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. Bring down the Q. 6 times 5 is 30. And 1 times 6 is 6. Plus 6 times 1 is 6. 3 times 1 is is 3. So now I'm going to simplify these because they should simplify to whole numbers. 12 over 3 is 4, plus 6 over 6 just simplifies to a 1, so I'm going to leave that as a Q. 30 divided by 6 is 5Q, plus 6 over 3 is a 2. So now I've got another much more easier to use equation. I'm going to cancel out the Q by subtracting a Q from both sides. That's going to leave me with a 4 over here, and that is going to leave me with a 4q plus t over on that, or plus 2, sorry, over on that side. Subtract 2 from both sides. 2 is equal to 4q, and then, of course, I have to divide both sides by 4. 2 divided by 4 is going to end up being... 1 half. So I'm pretty sure that Q is equal to 1 half. Now I have to go back and check it, make sure I did it right. So the first thing I'm going to do is recopy the original problem. So 2 thirds plus 1 over 6 Q is equal to 5 over 6 Q Oops, I kind of ran out of room. Sorry guys. Then, because I'm pretty sure that Q is equal to 1 half, I'm going to go in and substitute 1 half. I'm going to rewrite the rest of the problem first. So because I think that Q is equal to 1 half, instead of doing 1 6 times Q, I'm going to do 1 6 times 1 half. Instead of doing 5 over 6 times Q, I'm going to do 5 over 6 times 1 half. If I do that multiplication, 1 times 1 is 1, 6 times 2 is 12. Bring down the rest of it. This multiplication here, 5 times 1 is 5, 6 times 2 is 12. I need a common denominator, so this one is going to become 8 over 12 plus 1 over 12. This is going to become 5 over 12 plus 4 over 12. And finally, it all simplifies to 9 over 12. So because I took 1 half and put it into the original equation, I can say pretty sure that I did it correctly.